we are entering Bloom Specialty Coffee here in Bucharest and this was Cosmin. Hey, I'm Cosmin and I make coffee for a living. At the end of the day, I serve coffee. And it doesn't matter if I own the shop or if I work there. It's the same thing. Because this is what I love to do. I love making coffee and I love to, to go around the world and meet awesome coffee people and grab a coffee, grab a beer, enjoy ourselves. I used to be really young. I was 20 years old, just moved to England and to the UK. I was, I was not the person I am today, no way, no how. I was more immature. I wanted to make money. And then I discovered coffee. I used to hate coffee. I thought it was bitter. And I walked into the shop and an Australian bloke was there and it was like, oh, have a flat white. I was like, no, 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 I want, a, I want like a soda or something like that. She was like, no, no, you have to have the flat white. I was like, who's this guy? He's like, if you don't like it, I'll pay for it. And I was like, okay, let's have it. And he poured like a perfect Rosetta. I didn't know about latte art back then. Uh, and just as a background thing, my parent, my dad is a painter and my sister is a painter. So uh, I grew up with artsy stuff around me. So I saw the latte art, I was like, oh my God, what is this? And I tried the flat white, it was really sweet. I think it was an Ethiopian, I can't remember. Uh, and I was like, I want to do this. I used to work in a two Michelin star hotel, restaurant and I quit my job the next day. And I was like, I'm going to apply. I didn't even know I'm going to get a job at the shop. I just applied for it. I was like, I need to do this. This is like, this is my thing. And I applied, they didn't answer. I went there two weeks after. I was like, I insisted and they gave me a chance. And since then I worked in several shops. I always changed mainly because I wanted to learn as much as possible from each one. When I felt that I was limited, or let's say, because you are limited in certain areas of the shops, because people decide they have their own view. So I just wanted to see as many views as possible on what coffee is. And I think the last shop I worked for that wasn't mine was Maxwell's, Colonial Smalls. And that completely changed the way I view coffee. Completely changed the way I view coffee in one day. It's funny because I applied for Cologne and Smalls like in 2010, I think, and I didn't get the job because nobody answered my email. Thank you, Max. Uh, and then I, uh, I was there just visiting and I heard Max was looking for staff. I dropped him on email. He's like, come to Bath. Let's have a chat. Let's have an interview. We had an interview. We hit it off, like straight off. Like we got along straight from the beginning. He was like, come, I'll, I'll show you the shop. And the first thing we did was TDS some Lungos and some espresso. That's like the induction to his shop. Just as like, usually people show you, oh, this is where we wash the dishes. <laughs> this is where <laughs> you get the toilet paper. But Max, uh, Max was like, oh, let's do this. And like, oh, try the water. And like, cause he was just writing about the water stuff back then. It was like, oh, I saw him so excited about everything. And, the idea with the coffee is the the thing with the coffee made me like three different origins change them every week i was like wow that's hard <laughs> and we used to dial them in every morning and all of us used to write on a little note like a post-it we used to write what we think they taste like and after we a week we were all a match and i found it amazing we weren't looking at each other but i would just find it amazing because I talk about coffee as so a subjective matter, but it wasn't there because we were always all getting the same results. So that kind of changed everything I viewed as coffee because I saw coffee in a very strict way. Coffee has to be this. And then it showed me, well, coffee is a lot of things and we don't understand coffee yet. And we literally know any, we don't know anything about it. We're just starting to learn. We're starting to get more done. <laughs> <laughs> well, my family didn't agree with me for like six out of eight years, basically. Because like people from the outside don't see how hard it is what we do. Because it's really hard. Or they don't understand the potential career that it's in coffee. There is, there is a potential career. Trust me, guys. You heard it from me. Uh, it's, 
they they don't see the behind the scenes that go on. They just see someone because like a lot of people come into the shop. They don't see what we do. They don't see the maximum density damp. They don't see the 4.8 bars. They just saw see us damp something, push a button, do some milk. They just hear the sound and just pour it. And it's like oh that's easy. Everybody does that. And then they come for a course and they're like. Oh my god, this is so hard. And this is just the distribution part. Uh, when they start tamping, oh my god, this is so hard. When they do the milk, oh my god, this is so hard. There's a lot of things that people don't see. And it's your family might not agree with you when you're going to say, like, I want to be a coffee professional. And they'll be like, what? <laughs> but there is a career there. And there's, there's a lot of branches you can go. You can become a roaster. You can become a manager. You can become a lot of things in coffee. You can become a coffee writer. It's, so there is a lot of coffee blogs. There's, you can go around Europe and interview people <laughs> and ask them about it and show it to the world. Because this is like showing different cultures and the impact they have on coffee and how they see it. So there's a lot of ways you can develop a career in coffee. Yeah. There's no secret. It's just working. Work a lot. Never stop. You, I've, I've hit the bottom so many times here. It's eight years. I've hit the bottom, I think, at least once or twice a year. Just get up. It's hard. It's going to be hard. Work harder. Focus harder. Talk to more people. Put your ideas out there. Be open about new ideas. Don't be very, don't be close. Don't be narrow-minded and just struggle. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be hard. The first years are really hard, but just push yourself. And if you do that, I guarantee you that you're gonna end up having your own shop or your own business or your own roastery. It's just a matter of time and getting the right people around you. What I would recommend people, and I've said that to me, I've said to this to a lot of people, it's when you see them, when you see your mentors or idols or whatever you want to call it, don't, don't be the fanboy. Go and have a conversation with them. This is what we want. We want to have conversations. We don't want to be like, oh, I read your book. It's awesome. Thank you. I'm sure it's like, it's lovely that you think that you read someone's book and it's, but at the same time, go and challenge it. Say, oh, I read your book, but I think uh, this is interesting. And because we want to have conversations because that's what inspires us later on and inspires us to become better. It's knowing how, because a thousand minds are better than one. A hundred minds, two minds are better than one. So go and have a chat with them, like friendly chat. Don't be intimidated. Don't be, if you think, if you look up to someone in the industry, just go and chat with them. This is what happened with me and now I'm, friends with people that I used to read about and I'm like talking to people that I used to like dream about meeting and now we're I have their number we get to chat with like now and again we send photos to each other it's like and it's mainly because I treat them as humans well I think it's it takes at least four six four to six months to understand the basics in a shop like that's focused on coffee. So in four to six months, you can actually be a really good barista if you work with the right people that are really open and you get to work with a lot of coffee, but mainly try as much coffee as possible. Try different roasters, different shops, different, I don't know, different countries. It's, coffee is not just a little thing here. It's a whole universe. So it's creating your palate mainly. That's very important for a barista. And that's not just from coffee, that's from the alcohol you drink, the co food you eat, the beverages, sodas, whatever you drink. They're all part of like your palate. So I would try and like work on the sensory side because the technical side is quite easy to a certain degree. It's just mechanical, even latte art, it's a mechanic movement of the hand. So you can reproduce all of that, but it's the harder thing to get is the palate. That's the hardest thing you could probably the, the mo most work you would have to do is on the palate and on your ego. Be humble, like I was saying earlier, that's very important. I would work on flavor awareness. I would try to show him what uh, different grades of 
under roasted, underdeveloped coffee is, under extracted coffee is, over extracted, overdeveloped, just so he understands the extremes. So if he understands the extremes, he understands the middle as well. Because like we focus so much on what a coffee extraction should be, we forget what uh, the, the extremes are. We're gonna take over. Good. So we forget what the extremes are, so we don't know where to stop. But if you push your, like what I usually recommend when dialing in a coffee mainly, is go as far as, as, as high as possible. When you're gonna read, because that's the easiest way to understand coffee. If it's bitter and it has a nasty impact on your, on your palate, then you're gonna know like, oh, I can't go higher, I have to go down. Whereas if you go lower, it can actually fool your palate and think it's sweet and it's the acidity, but it's missing a lot of things that you're not perceiving. So yeah, flavor awareness would be the thing that I would do in one week. Oh, what I wish, oh, I just wish the community gets stronger. A lot of people watching this will understand what I mean. Because a lot of times we become very absorbed by what we do and we don't see it as a community more as how, what impact I have on it, what impact I have on the industry. It's, the, it's all of us, it's not just one person. I could not do what I do without Steam, Origo and a lot of other shops in Bucharest. I could not, because there would not be a, enough awareness. So we're an ecosystem. We all work together for the same thing, promoting specialty coffee and making really damn good coffee. So I would wish communities will get closer and stronger for everywhere, because this is not an issue we have here. It's an issue everywhere. Basically, yeah, that's it. Thank you.